Hello and good morning. Welcome to worship at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. I'm Michelle Lewis, and I'm the pastor here at Bread of Life. Welcome. Hello, I'm Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life, and I'm pleased that you can join us for worship today. Hi, I'm David Evans, ASL interpreter. Dorothy saying, today is Sunday, March 14th. This is the fourth Sunday of Lent. Our focus today is breaking the chains of our own sense of entitlement and self-importance. The reason is for the sake of faith and trusting others outside of our own groups and our, ourselves. Pastor Michelle, today we will celebrate the Lord's Supper. So wherever you're at right now, gather your bread and your cup and we'll use them later in our service. Also, if you want an Easter flower, make sure that you order those in short order. Deacon Dorothy is saying, as we light our candles here, please light your candle wherever you are. Let this be the season you turn your face toward the one who calls to you. And we all say together, return, return to the Lord. Pastor Michelle. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And the response, also with you. Prayer for the day. Lord, you are the divine word. You sent Moses to teach your law to the people and bring chaos to order. You sent prophets to call people to repent and bring hope to the hopeless. You sent your son Jesus to become your living, active word. Open our hearts to accept your word. May our lives reflect the light of your truth to others. We pray in your living, active word, Jesus. Amen.
Psalm for the day, visual verse, Psalm 41, 1 through 3. You are blessed when you consider the poor and the weak. You will be delivered in the day of trouble. The one who knows all hearts protects you and renews your life. You are called blessed in the land. You are not overcome by fear. For the heart of your heart will sustain you. In illness, you will find comfort and healing. And now our gospel lesson. This is the gospel according to Luke, chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. Jesus said, There was a rich man who always dressed in the finest clothes. He was so rich that he was able to enjoy all the best things every day. There was also a very poor man named Lazarus. Lazarus's body was covered with sores. He was often put by the rich man's gate. Lazarus wanted only to eat the scraps of food left on the floor under the rich man's table. And the dogs came and licked his sores. Later, Lazarus died. The angels took him and placed him in the arms of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. He was sent to the place of death and suffered great pain. He saw Abraham far away with Lazarus in his arms. And he called out, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to me so that he can dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am suffering in this fire. But Abraham said, My child, remember when you lived? You had all the good things in life. Lazarus had nothing but problems. Now he is comforted here. And you are suffering. Also, there is a pig, a big pit between you and us. No one can cross over to help you. And no one can come from here to there. The rich man said, then please, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to my father's house on earth. I have five brothers. He could warn my brothers so that they will not come to this place of pain. But Abraham said, they have the law of Moses and the writings of the prophet to read. Let them learn from that.
the rich man said, no, Father Abraham. But if somebody came to them from the dead, then they would decide to change their lives. But Abraham said to him, if your brothers won't listen to Moses and the prophets, then they won't listen to someone who has come back from the dead. Word of the Lord. My friends, grace and peace to you from our God, who is good. First, I just wanted to say thank you to Dorothy for her interpretation. Um, I think she really helped us get a sense of um, this story. So thank you. So we are oh, more than halfway through Lent already. And during our Lent season this year, we've been talking about breaking the chains. We've been focusing on different kinds of chains that keep us bound and tied down. Things that hold us back from reaching out to others or things that cause us to doubt ourselves, doubt others. We are also making paper chains. So it's a little, I know, a little confusing. I got confused at the beginning. And so we're just going with it. So we're gonna make paper chains. And at the end of Lent for Easter, we can shred our paper chains and throw all the paper like confetti. And in the meantime, we have this record of what's been happening during Lent. So we can look back and see what is God teaching us? What are the different kinds of chains that we encounter in the world? What keeps us from one another? What keeps us away from God? So for today, we're going to keep thinking about uh, different kinds of chains. And today, we um, I'm inviting us to wrestle with our own sense of entitlement or things that I deserve, my privilege, and my own self importance. I want us to think about that and how that kind of attitude or that kind of perspective will keep us from trusting others. And maybe those attitudes keep us from caring for others. And today's gospel story helps us to see how privilege and entitlement can be like a chain. The gospel story is set up to exaggerate differences between two people. And I think it shows us how hard it can be to break the chains of privilege and self-importance. So I invite you to wonder where you might feel more important than someone else. or how you might be moved to show mercy and kindness to another. So 
So as we go uh, forward with this sermon, I want us to start with noticing some differences. So in today's gospel lesson, there are two men who are described. The first one is so wealthy that he has a huge feast of food every day. It's like Thanksgiving every day at his house. He dresses in the finest clothes and he has servants tending to him. This guy can go, come and go. He can decide what he wants to do with his day every day. He can decide what he wants to do and when he wants to do it. And it seems like he walks by Lazarus every day without ever noticing him. I imagine him walking like kind of like that. He looks away. And it's important to note but this man who is so wealthy, this man who has so many resources, he doesn't have a name. The Bible doesn't give him a name. We just call him the rich man. The other person in today's story is named he has a name. His name is Lazarus. Now, this is a different Lazarus than the one who um, had died and then Jesus said, rise again. It's a different person. Uh, same name, but different person. So his name is Lazarus. He is very poor. He's so poor that really the only choice he has for what to do with himself is to sit at the gate of a rich person, hoping that maybe some food will come to him. He doesn't have piles and piles of food to feast on every day. And in fact, this Lazarus, is sick. His body is covered in sores, not in beautiful, fancy clothes. Lazarus, he doesn't have all the choices to come and go. He can't decide, what will I do today? Where will I go today? What am I going to do? Lazarus doesn't have the luxury to stay home and not go to the gates of the rich man. Because if he doesn't go and beg, what will he eat? How will he take care of himself? Lazarus is a person who is an outcast in his society. He doesn't have many choices in his life. In fact, the story tells us that the only comfort he really gets is when the wild dogs come and lick him to try to get him. This person has a name, Lazarus. So the story sets up to show us that really what seems to be important is not important. Having everything you could possibly want, fancy clothes, lots of food, that's not important. 
the roles are reversed. The person who has the ability to show mercy and kindness, that's who we expect to be honored. We think that person will be important. But he goes without a name. And Lazarus, the one who lives by the mercy and kindness of others, he's the one that we might feel sorry for and look down on. He has a name. So the story is set up showing these huge contrasts between their lives to help really emphasize the point, which I think one of the points of the story is that what we people think is really important is not what God thinks is important. Then both of the men die and you can see that the contrasts continue, right? The rich man has a formal burial with the nicest fabrics and the best location. And there's a big group of people who come to mourn for him. And when Lazarus dies, no one really notices that he's gone. The angels themselves come to carry him away. And then their destinations are similarly contrasting. The rich man is tormented. He goes to Hades. He is tormented and burning and he is far, far away from the people of faith represented by Father Abraham. rich man is in agony. Meanwhile, Lazarus is at Abraham's side. He is being comforted by Abraham. He is with the people of faith. And Lazarus is not in agony anymore. His pain and suffering has gone away. But this is funny, I think. The rich man thinks that he is still in a position to order Lazarus around. He thinks he's in a position of privilege to tell other people what to do and to have them serve him. Even in the fires of Hades, that rich guy thinks he's in control. <sighs> this week here in Minnesota, the trial for Derek Chauvin started. He is the police officer who kneeled on George Floyd's neck. He killed George Floyd in May of 2020. In the days after George Floyd was murdered, there were huge protests all around the world, all summer really. Support for the Black Lives Matter movement increased. And many, many white people showed up to protest police brutality against black and brown people.
it was common to see newspaper reports and TV stories about reforming police funding. People were demanding that we change our approach to, to community crisis. Thing. Instead of sending armed police into situations where someone was having mental health crisis, that instead we train up counselors and first responders who are able to support people, help de-escalate the situation. That was last summer. And now, about 10 months after George Floyd's murder, support for these kinds of changes and actions is fading. It is turning out that it is really hard for the white community to give up the privilege of having on their side. It turns out it is a lot harder to imagine, um, to reimagine safety for other, for everyone, rather than safety for only some. It takes a lot to reimagine the role that police play in, the, in our lives and in our society, because the history of policing in the United States, it is really, it was set up to protect white people from folks who are black and brown and indigenous. The history of police in the United States is rooted in the privilege that white and light-skinned people have. Privilege that presumes white and light-skinned people are innocent. Privilege that presumes white and light-skinned people are doing the right thing and following the laws. Really, it's privilege that presumes anyone else who has darker colored skin is not following the rules. And so, like this rich man in Hades in today's Bible story, we find ourselves stuck in a place of thinking that we deserve privilege, that we ought to be in control. And at the very same time, we both cry out that police need to treat black and brown people with respect and dignity. And we want the police budget and authority to stay the same way. Now, I want to just make a note here that I am learning, learning lots about privilege. And I know that there are layers and layers of privilege. And here at Bread of Life, you all have taught me about my own privilege, that I have access and opportunity to all kinds of things as I'm able to hear. Opportunities that you are not given because you are deaf.
because you have been willing to share your experiences and your lives with me, I every once in a while get a glimpse of how frustrating and isolating life can be for you. Because of you, I have been learning again and again and again about the work that we need to do to create justice and to eliminate the hearing privileges that are all over the place. So I recognize that, or I begin to recognize that, and also need to say that even though I have more privileges than you, we who have light colored skin, we have more privileges than other people who have black. That means that here in our church congregation, we still have a lot to do. Because for most of us who are light-skinned, when we are afraid or when we feel in danger, we most of the time can feel okay to call the police. Now, this is not true for our neighbors who are black and brown and indigenous. And again, I want to say, I recognize that the sense of safety I have when I call the police is different than when you were deaf call the police. And still, we all have to keep learning. We have to learn how our behaviors can be hurtful to others. And we have to continue to lift up our hands, raise our voices to declare that everyone, everyone, needs to be protected under the law. We who have privileges, like the rich man in the story, we need to use our privilege to create mercy and kindness. We need to keep contacting our local state, local and state leaders, our national leaders too, to let them know that we, who are people of faith, we want our community, we want our towns, our schools, our churches, we want these places to be places of justice and safety for everyone, regardless of skin color, regardless of whether we can hear or not. So really, we, the call is to not be like the rich man in today's story. I misspoke. The rich man in today's story didn't show mercy and kindness. We are called to create justice, to show mercy and kindness. 
This is what our faith calls us to do. To see those who are suffering in our midst. To use our privileges, whatever privileges we have, to use those to help people who don't have privilege. Even if we just have a little bit more privilege than another person. We are still called to use that on behalf of others. So my question for all of us is what will we do this week to use our privileges to help others? Prayers of the people. Let us pray for people of God and their needs. Merciful God, help us to know your presence during our Lent journey. Teach us again about baptism, a gift from you. Help us share our resources to glorify you and to help others. Every day, remind us to pray. Turn our attention toward others. Show us that our treasures are in you alone, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Michelle, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And we say together and also with you. Those of you at home, please share a sign of God's peace with one another, which means maybe you need to text somebody or send them an email, or maybe just greet someone else and share the peace with them.
All right, we're at our time in worship again this week where we uh, think about those candles that are in the screen with Dorothy. Each week of Lent here at Bread of Life, we put out a candle so that as we go through the season of Lent, it seems like there's more darkness than light. Kind of matches how we feel, like maybe there are more problems in our world than there are solutions. And during Lent, we remember again this story about how Jesus is betrayed, how he suffers and dies. And we take time with that hard, hard story. And this week in Lent is not an easy thing that we are wrestling with, right? Our own tendencies to think that we are more important than someone else. That maybe we're more trustworthy or more responsible that we deserve all of the things that we have in our lives. And we ask God to help us break those chains that keep us feeling as if we deserve God's love, as if we are more important than others. Because these chains keep us from trusting others, from respecting others. These chains keep us from trusting God. So as we put out another candle, we acknowledge again our mistakes and our sins. We acknowledge that we get distracted from following God closely. And we acknowledge that we try to protect ourselves by keeping others away from us. We pray to God for hope and help. Well, at this time, I'm going to ask Dorothy to put out one of the candles. Let us pray. God, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, give us strength and courage to follow you more closely. Open our hearts and minds to your constant presence. Help us to put our trust in you. Amen. Uh, and just like every week, come to this time in our worship service, that's a little weird. <laughs> it's when we ask everyone to give us the money, <laughs> we do turn our attention to God in Lent. And we are called to put our faith into action. One way that we people experience faith is by giving some of our money away. 
And when you give a little bit or maybe a lot of it of your money to Bread of Life, you help us in our mission. To share the good news that God loves everyone. Whether you can hear or whether you can't hear, God loves everyone. And here at Bread of Life, we love everyone too. And so we share the good news. God loves you. And so we invite you to give generously, to put your faith into action. We ask that you send a check to Bread of Life and let you know that we do check our mailbox regularly. So your check isn't going to just sit outside for a long time. Or you can also give through an online um, giving option. And uh, that information will be at the bottom of the screen. So you'll be able to see where to go for that. So at this time, we ask you to prepare your offering. An offering prayer. Let us give God our gifts and pray, Lord, when you open your hands, we are filled with good things. May our gifts be signs of our gratitude and reveal your love to the world. Love which embraces all of your children. Amen. Pastor Michelle, the Lord be with you. And we say in response, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always give thank and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. God, you call your people to cleanse our hearts, to prepare with joy, for the feast that celebrates the mysteries of your Passover. You call your people to cleanse our hearts so that our joy is renewed in the gift of baptism. You call your people to cleanse our hearts so that we trust in you. Because of that, we will know the fullness of your grace. So with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, together we praise your name and join in their unending song. We invite you to join in and turn to the Lord with us, which will not be voiced.
on Jesus last night when he gathered to eat with his friends and followers, he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, thanked God, blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, thanked God, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new agreement in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We invite you to join in the Lord's Prayer. This will not be void. Return to the Lord your God. Follow the Lord your God. You are all invited to the table here. For this table belongs to God. And we are honored to share it with anyone who desires to eat. When you serve one another with the bread, please use language a body of Christ given for you. And with the cup, please use language, blood of Christ shed for you. And for those of you who are by yourselves, I will administer the bread and the cup for you now. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Humble and self-giving God, we now leave to go out into the world Send us with the power of the Holy Spirit to share your love all around the world. Amen. Pastor Michelle, receive the blessing before you go. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy.
May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Deacon Dorothy. Go now in peace and serve the Lord. And we say together, thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>